Good afternoon class and welcome to this topic of dichotomous schemes. So what you're seeing here on the first page is about classification of animals. So classification of animals, as you would already know by now, ultimately falls regarding on characteristics, be it animals or plants or whatever. How things are categorized and sorted all falls within the morphology or sometimes the genetic characteristics of that particular organism. So it's also pretty much in terms of uh, the application of, say, your household work or household items. I'm sure when it comes to food items, you would categorize vegetables, fruits, uh, and sort them in their different shelves and areas, all right, because of their shelf life, you will put tins in one side. So technic technically, that is what classification is all about. You're sorting based on certain characteristics. So now, what dichotomous keys do is it actually helps aid um, with parts of the classification based on the specimens that are there or the specimens that you have in front of you. So it is very hard, if you've noticed, it's very hard to find a dichotomous keys of all of the organisms of the world. It's easier to have um, an evolution or a phylogenic a phylogenetic tree that actually sees the relationships um, but when it comes to dichotomous keys usually how that is more applied is uh, with uh, it's more in if you find samples of a particular area of interest or particular group of interest that, that you're keen to know and sort of find out what species it is that is how dichotomous keys come about so it's more made for something smaller scale all right so anyhow the objectives for today are to explain again what dichotomous keys are about how you would read a dichotomous key and most importantly if you are going to make your own dichotomous key in the future what are the important criteria of a good dichotomous key so let's move right into our introduction so you have already learned this topic by now i think back in form 5 or so about how life is organized at different levels from cells to biosphere. So you know that from a cell, in fact, you can even go right down to an atomic or molecular level, even below cells. But from there, if a group of atoms and whatnot, later it forms into cells, cells form to organs, organs to system, system to organism or the species of interest. And then it goes on to population, community, right up to biosphere. So that's where we're talking about. And life is life on Earth, there's, there's a diversity of all sorts of plants, animals, etc. To an extent that we are just a fraction of having you know what plants there are, uh, sorry, of what animals and plants they are. And it's more easier to understand what uh, are present on land, but there's still so much more to understand about the marine ecosystem itself. And the organisms that live within. So there's so much more discovery. So in terms of this kind of categorization, one would know how to go about it. But then, what if you were to find things that you don't know and you would like to know? So the reason why I put uh, Rihanna's picture here is actually if you know what the song title of this of this uh, of her album, then you can relate to the topic for today. So I'll let you figure that out. But anyhow. Now, there, there are times, there are situations where you have species that are probably already discovered by other researchers or other authors, but there are also incidences that they may not have been discovered at all, and you are likely to be a new discoverer of that species. So this is where dichotomous keys can aid. They're not always the Bible of your reference, but they can be used uh, to help aid or, uh, in terms of what species are likely known in your region. So what are dichotomous keys? So basically it's a tool that allows the user to determine the identity of the items, uh, in this case of course organisms, in the natural world based on the item's characteristics. So again, fundamentally, taxonomy, classification, phylogenetics, evolution, everything falls back 
on the main keyword of characteristics, either genetic characteristics, morphological characteristics, in all sorts. Everything falls back on characteristics. So for dichotomous key, dichotomous is actually derived from the Greek origin to mean two parts. All right. And dichotomous keys always give two distinct choices because it's dichot, di meaning two, in each step. Often they are opposites of each other. So for example, if you're going to do a dichotomous key of say a characteristic that's black, the opposite is going to be white, a good, evil, pointed, rounded, etc. And this can be expressed in either a chart form or a diagram or a key. So in this example, you have uh, what is known as the key, all right? And so at one point, you will have two epith epithet. So in this case, this organism is terrestrial. And so obviously, the opposite of terrestrial will be aquatic. So anything to terrestrial, you go straight to number two. But if it's anything aquatic, uh, animals of an aquatic ecosystem, you go straight to three. All right? Uh, and that's how it then follows. So you can either do it in a key as such, or you can do it in a diagram or a chart like this. This is probably a bit more user-friendly, a bit more interactive, um, and it's more appealing, particularly for kids and all who, who probably want to learn a little bit more and they need something to relate to, especially with graphics. But more often than not, um, when it comes to journals or anything of more serious references, they would actually use uh, a dichotomous key because the morphological characteristic that you would want to use are uh, actually going to be a little bit more detailed than this. So it's more helpful when it comes to journal writings, you would use a key. But when you're going to presentations or displays and you want to make something a bit more interactive, the diagram will definitely be a better choice with lesser keywords, uh, the main important keywords to help distinguish for characteristic. All right, so again, highlight it's all about the characteristics. The characteristics used here is to key out and will only work for groups of an organism which it was constructed. So basically what this is trying to say is that uh, for students, exact example, if you were to go to Bidong Island and you've only sampled, uh, say, planktons, uh, benthic organisms, and maybe some birds. So depending on how detailed you want to be um, or whether you want to separate based on the different groups, different what kind of organisms you get, but you can only work with the kind of organisms that were present, uh, that were sampled at the site. All right, so for example, in this activity, if you were to classify an oyster using the following key, okay, so if, if one were not to look at the names here and you understand what the characteristics of an oyster is, okay, so let's start it out, let's start out from this dichotomous key. So you know that oysters, they don't have feathers. All right, so you will go to number class two. Body has no fur, has no, okay, has hair or fur, and body has no fur or hair. So in this case, we know oysters, they don't have this, so it's 2B. And what does it say? Go to class three. So class three then says body has fins and body has no fins. So obviously oysters, they don't have fins, so they say to go to class five. And you're left with this option. Body has scales and body has no scales. So then, obviously, oysters have no scales, but guess what? It's amphibia. So in your understanding, do oysters come under the class amphibia? Obviously not, isn't it? So this is exactly what I'm trying to mention, that the organisms that are present at the time uh, can only... Uh, I, I beg your pardon, sorry that when a dichotomous key is constructed, one can only uh, construct based on the specimens that are present at the time and also on the, morph the morphological characteristics of the organisms that are present there. 
So that is why in this case, perhaps uh, the oyster was not present at the time of the sampling. And that's why one cannot use this kind of document key in order to help classify the oyster. All right. And then in another instance, um, once there are new material, all right, one might actually have to reorganize or reshuffle the hierarchy of your classification. So if you notice previously, um, for, for oyster shites, it was under class, but now it has been converted to superclass. So those kind of changes uh, can occur when more evidence is made available and the researchers or the authors feel that having to change the hierarchy, hierarchy is befitting at the time. All right. So in my case now, if you, example, were to make a dichotomous key, what are the most important characteristics that one needs to consider? Well, firstly, you need to use constant characteristics rather than variable ones. For example, flowers that change with the seasons. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit harder to construct things based on seasons, whether it's present or not, etc. So you need something a little bit more constant. The second part is to use measurements rather than terms like large or small, because really, how large is large or how small is small? So to have a particular value example like 3.5 times larger than or 10 times wider than, it's going to be more helpful for your readers to understand the extent of the size that you're talking about. All right. And then you have to, the third point is to preferably make the choice a positive one. Try to sound more positive when you're making your dichotomous key. Something like is instead of is not. Okay. So snakes ears are internal only. And then the other one will be external. So rather than not internal. So try to keep it to that point of being positive. The fourth point. If possible, start both choices of a pair with the same word or item or morphology. So in this case, you're talking about the body is round versus the body is square. So try not to make it suddenly about, uh, so this is going to be about shape, right? The body shape. So don't have an opposite that is not a shape. So example, the body is round versus 3.5 times larger than. So it's not everything not going to make sense. So try to keep to a certain uh, characteristic state. So in this case, example, it's body shape. And last but not least, Finish the dichotomous key with a full description of the organism. All right. So this part basically, uh, try, try to use at least two key important descriptions for an organism. The one that you saw here at the beginning of this presentation is actually a very simple diagram, which is supposed to be made more user friendly for children. But if you are coming to the level of having to write uh, like proper taxonomists, you would have to have a proper description. And in fact, once uh, you're able to achieve, uh, example, the, the main characteristics uh, based on the dichotomous key, it'll be good later on at the end of your dichotomous key to include a complete diagnosis and description of the organism or your subject matter. And that will be most helpful for your dichotomous key. All right. So this is pretty much all. It's one of my shortest um, presentations, but it's still equally very important to know that dichotomous keys are very useful. But at the same time, they're not supposed to be used entirely to resolve all identification. Because as I've mentioned here, again, it's about the samples that are present at the time. So you, those are things that you will have to consider when making your dichotomous keys. Um, and it will always be good to have a good sample size. Having, example, having to, to do a dichotomous key about three organisms is probably a little bit too little. Try to have 10 or more to have diversity. 